the talk is a title composer, but it won't be composer specific, to be honest. You will be able to reapply what we discussed or presented here in your Airflow configuration, assuming that you are going to use GKE as your Kubernetes cluster. Uh, so my name is uh, my name is uh, Rafał Bikac. I have been working through with Airflow for five years, uh, and uh, I'm a member of Airflow Summit orga organizing team. Piotr, do you want to introduce yourself? Yes. Yes. Thank. Thanks uh, to all of you for coming. I'm Piotr. You can hear me well, uh, and I'm tech leader in the Composer team. So here is the agenda for our talk. So we will shortly introduce you into Kubernetes uh, queue functionality. Uh, then we are going to describe what kind of airflow operators we uh, implemented uh, specifically for GKE queue functionality, which is a Google Kubernetes engine implementation of the of the queue. And then Piotr is going to show you the an example of airflow deck that uh, shows an example of LLM fine tuning process. So without further ado, let's get into the queue. So in general, why we need queue at all? So Natively, Kubernetes, class, uh, Kubernetes doesn't have the capability of queuing uh, jobs or, or uh, workloads, uh, as well as it doesn't have the capability of executing them in any specific order. Uh, that's why uh, queue functionality was uh, created, first designed, uh, created, and uh, implemented. And basically, it serves as a queuing mechanism with, uh, queue, uh, with quota uh, management. And there will be a little bit more information about uh, Q further in the slides. But before we get into the details of Q, how potentially Q can work in the existing GKE cluster? So first of all, we need to mention uh, that there is a person or the owner of the Kubernetes cluster who is defining the resources of the, that are at the disposal of the cluster. So this person called either Kubernetes administrator or batch administrator. This person is responsible for defining resource flavors, and those resource flavors, it uh, might be GKE nodes running on high CPU or low CPU virtual machines. Those virtual machines can be, equ be equipped with GPUs, and those GPUs, of course, can be of different types, for example, different types of NVIDIA uh, GPU uh, hardware. Uh, and those resource flavors further are used by uh, batch administrator uh, to define the characteristic of a cluster, and here it is called cluster queue. So cluster queue basically uh, gathers the information about the resource flavors, provides information how much of a given resource you have uh, in the cluster, and what kind of workloads can use those resource flavors. So for example, in cluster queue, you are going to find information that, for example, you have a, you have availability of 200 uh, GPU uh, NVIDIA hardware, uh, and this is available to workloads with specific characteristic of CPU, CPU memory, and of course, uh, those workloads would probably require uh, GPU support. There is also a concept of local queues. Local queues, so cluster queue is a concept on the cluster level, so it's a resource of the cluster level. Local queues are namespace uh, level resources, and those namespaces are actually for workloads with similar compute and memory and GPU characteristics. So there is an assumption that if you belong to the same local queue, you are going to all the workloads running within this namespace or within this local queue will require the same, the same kind of hardware to be executed. And the last thing that is required is priority. And priority, this is the information of how critical a given workload is. And this information is used to by Q uh, to decide whether a given workload has higher priority over the other, and in case there is not enough resources in GKE cluster, some lower priority uh, the workload will be interrupted, uh, evicted, just to mm, make a space uh, from the resource perspective for higher priority workload. And Q takes into account all this information, resource flavors, cluster queues, local queues, priority classes, uh, and it exposes uh, a batch API, and now whenever you want to submit a job requiring special, uh, specific, uh, with specific hardware constraints or requirements, you submit it to Q, and Q is responsible for making sure, first of all, to check if there is, no, if there is enough resources to execute your job, Kubernetes job. If, if there is enough resources, it is going to uh, admit or allow for job execution. It's going to update the information about the, the current usage of resources. 
and it is going to make sure that you are not exceeding the quota of the resources assigned to your cluster. On the other hand, if this is high priority workload and there is not enough resources in the cluster, a queue is going to interrupt some other workload with lower priority just to make space for your workload. So here, this is in the nutshell what queue is about and uh, what it does. In general, of course, queue operates on Kubernetes, uh, which has uh, native capabilities for auto-scaling, uh, monitoring wo wor uh, workloads and managing the life cycle of the workloads. So for example, creating jobs, uh, deleting jobs and interrupting them. Uh, the functions of uh, queue, you could divide into those five uh, uh, categories. Maybe we are not going to discuss each of these categories that is listed in the screen, but the most important thing is that first of all, you have the possibility to define priorities for your workloads. Uh, so this is uh, one thing then you have the possibility to set up schemas for sharing resources, for example, GPUs between all the workloads that are running on your GKE cluster, and in case workloads belong to the same local queue or to the, to the same namespace, there is a mechanism of fairly securing the resources uh, for those workloads. So in this way, you are not going to starve one type of a workload in favor of, of the other. Queue is an open source controller, that is uh, developed uh, under, uh, under the umbrella of Cloud Native Computing Foundation. Uh, so you, here you have the link to the uh, SIG page of uh, this functionality. You can install it on your own, on your cluster that either runs on, on cloud or on-prem. See, it's up to you. Uh, majority of cloud service providers provide the functionality of uh, queue uh, within the their managed uh, offerings of Kubernetes. So in case of Google, uh, Google offers uh, so-called GKE batch functionality and GKE batch offers uh, queue functionality. And this is uh, my last slide before I give the floor to, to my colleague. But here's an example of how uh, you can use queue uh, to uh, assign uh, Kubernetes uh, resources to DAGs. And uh, in this example, we have three groups of DAGs. Uh, the, the red group is the most critical, uh, these are the DAGs that are most critical, probably for their production depends on it. And in case of this group of DAGs, uh, you want to make sure that there is always enough hardware and uh, GPUs to run all those DAGs. This is the highest priority workload, so it is going to evict another workload. Then we have a green group of DAGs. Those DAGs could be run actually at any time. They could be also interrupted at any time. We are going to use, so in this particular uh, group, for this particular group, we are going to use uh, so-called spot machines. Those machines uh, are preemptable virtual machines that can be interrupted anyway. On the other hand, they have very nice feature. They are the cheapest virtual machines. So probably your developers are using this uh, type of uh, resource. They are running many, many times those DAGs uh, every day. So it's maybe not that critical that every DAG uh, is executed on time it can be, for example, interrupted. And the last group of uh, DAGs, this is the blue one. Uh, here, here we want to make sure that there is enough, uh, enough uh, resources to run those DAGs. And uh, in this particular case, we are using the resources that we called here compact. It means that those virtual machines uh, have optimized the network connectivity. As a result of it, uh, those DAGs should be executed maybe with low priority. On the other hand, there should be low latency of the network. So thanks to Q, and thanks to how you are going to use airflow operators within your DAX, you will be able to map execution of your DAX, of these DAX, into appropriate resources in the GKE cluster. Thanks. Okay, so moving from theory, thanks Rafał, to some practice. I will start describing the operators that we Google team implemented, adding to the airflow to operate with GKE and with the queue. And then I will show you the example DAG that we prepared. I prepared with the colleague from GKE team, especially for this conference and the one that you can see on our booth running and executing some very simple fine tuning workload. So those four operators are the core to execute like the example doc that you're laughing at the names probably. <laughs> so those are four operators that I used in the example, which are needed to set up GK cluster, run, set up queue and all the resources that Rafa was talking about, run all the jobs and then delete cluster. 
So first one, GK create, GK cluster create operator, it's shorter. With that, you can, in the dynamic workloads, you can pass the cluster configuration and create a cluster in your GCP project. Next one, G GK start queue inside cluster operator. You specify the version of the queue that you want to run and it basically fetches an install in the GK cluster, the queue in that specific version. The GK create custom resource operator, it is used to create all queue specific resources. So the resource flavors that are needed to define different classes of resources in your cluster, cluster queues and local queues, which are abstractions of the queues that you submit your jobs to, and the priority classes if you need to set different priorities to the jobs. And GK start queue job operator, which inherits from GK start job operator, but it enables you to submit the job directly to the queue, letting the queue to handle all the magic running in the cluster. So I will dive into the specifics maybe more in the example. So starting with Airflow orchestrate, orchestrating LLM fine tuning process. We imagined something like that. So we took the Google Gemma model which is like very lightweight model, but the same that is, was used for Gemini. This is what they say. And we start with preparing some data on the GCS bucket that will be later used for fine tuning. The first step, the pre-processing is doing actually some token, tokenizing and uh, sampling of the raw data. This, is, this first step is already done on the queue. Then we are storing it back to the GCS and we start the actual fine tuning job. The, this is LoRa, low adaptation rank fine tuning, which focus on modifying not all, but only parts of the weights in the model. It actually gives pretty, pretty nice results. We followed some of the Vertex AI public demo for that. After that, after the fine tuning done in parallel again in the queue, we are gathering all the models stored on the GCS and we are benchmarking them. We are using the perplexity benchmark, which basically allows you to evaluate how your model is, is operating. And then we choose the champion, so the best model. We upload it back to the storage and then we upload it to Vertex AI. Hence the question from the previous conversation we we show like the, the Vertex AI integration as well. So this is the view from our Composer DAC UI and I will go step by step by, by the DAC. Unfortunately, I won't be able to play like the whole sequence here because we will run out of time. But if you're interested, you can come to our booth and there's a three minute movie that is basically doing this two and a half hour DAC in three minutes speed up. So we start with creating cluster, adding adding queue to the cluster, creating tiny and high memory resource flavors. So we have two resource flavors simulating different machine types, creating cluster queue, which is cluster level resource and simulating two teams who are competing or sharing resources in the queue with two local queues, which are team specific resources. So some called here, and this is the configuration of GK cluster and few things I wanted to point out here that were interesting during setting up this demo. We configure the GK workload identity. This is used in order for your jobs to be able to access other Google services. For example, in our case, GCS. We also use GCS Fuse and it was like a huge investment done recently to create CSI driver and enable very easy integration of your GCS bucket to the Kubernetes pods and jobs uh, and mount them and as the ephemeral vo volumes. So here you have like the, the example of that. So here the uh, GCS view CSI driver is configured in the cluster. And then later in the jobs, you can see the, like the usage of it. What else? Also, the labels are created for each node pool. So you can see there are three different node pools here. One is like out of scale, the other is for the high memory, and they have workflow type tiny. 
for this auto-scaled pool. The other have different workflow types. Those are the labels that are then used by the queue to schedule jobs and run them on the specific pools. GK metadata server, I pointed it out because yeah, it's, you need to remember it in order for Kubernetes to be able to use workload identity pool. I fall for that. So. And then you use GK create cluster operator, start queue inside cluster operator, as I described before, to create and bootstrap those resources. Okay, so now the resource flavors. Those we have one tiny resource flavor and the other high memory resource flavor, which describes different machines that you have in your cluster. And we also create two local queues, as I said before, to simulate two different teams competing for the resources. And the most important abstraction is the cluster queue, which maps the flavors to the quotas, which are then controlled by the queue. Here we have quota for CPU, memory, and pods. You can have different quota like defined customly or for the machine types. And we create like tiny CPU and high memory flavor. And we use GK create custom resource operator to create those resources in the cluster. And here in the fun begins, we start with fetching raw data. This is the first step. Then we run job pre-process, which is the job that is submitted to this tiny pool in the queue, which fetches the data and is doing some uh, pre-processing with that. Then like the heaviest job in, the, uh, in this DAG, the fine tuning. This is run on this high memory flavor. Then one team is generating report, which basically like is some dummy image. And the other team is converting the model from the, from the gamma to the hugging faces format, and then doing the benchmark of this job using the perplexity benchmark, finding which of those four models is the best or was fine-tuned with the best results. And keep in mind that like the example that was recorded in the movie and, and the one that is on the page, because it's also, I created a GitHub repo with this doc that you can check it out after the conference. It's running on like some small resources because actual fine-tuning should probably take more hours and be run on some heavier machines. But, but it's nice for the, it's, it already make the model better. So going through, through the starting with preprocessing. Here, we are using start queue job operator to submit the job directly to the queue. What's interesting here is that we pass, we're saying what is the queue name. We're using local queue as so one of the team specific resources. We are passing the image that will be executed in the Kubernetes job, some environment variables and down, you can see volume mounts and volumes. We are using GCS Fuse to mount ephemeral volume to that job. Those are the, the, the full code will fit the slide, but as I said, in GitHub, you can check it out if you're interested in, the, in more details. The fine tuning job is very similar. It runs different image. It has higher resource requirements and those resource requirements are the ways for the queue to calculate the quotas and calculate how it can submit the job and how it should either queue or maybe preempt some lower priority jobs for the, to run this specific fine tuning. And the benchmark, which is the last step, this is actually like simple Python code. At the end, it is taking all the models, it, it is also specifying the, the resource requirements and it is running, as I said, perplexity benchmark to find which model was at the end the best and fine tuned. And the last step is upload the model to the Vertex AI. We also had those operators were not added specifically, but, but we have them. You can use the link to the model that is in GCS and trigger the operator in three steps. So first upload the model, then create endpoint, and then the, the model will be available on the Vertex AI so we can use it, validate it, or you know, whatever you want with it. And deployed model operator is the last step here. 
So the execution part, as I said, I won't be playing video now, but in the in our booth you can see the full execution with the DAC and 3K9S that shows you the first on the left when you will be watching the video. This is the view of the queue resources. So the GKE resources, but focus this on the cluster queue. And the flavors that you are seeing here are dynamically showing how the quotas get reserved. So when you submit a job, it consumes the quota and you can nicely see like the tiny resource flavor or the high memory resource flavor is getting consumed. On the other, you will see the jobs that are run on the GKE cluster and the nodes that are getting out of scale, which is a great feature of GKE and differentiator of why it's nice to use GKE for LLM jobs. And that will be all. You can, if you want to use the QR code to go, it points to the GitHub, I promise you, GitHub website with the code and codes of the DAG, but also four Docker images that, not Docker images, but the code for that to, to create those Docker images for fine tuning, converting benchmark and pre-processing. So you can experiment with this on your own. Yeah, and I think that's it. Thank you.